Hello, I am Dave, aka Ghost Feet, and this is Enter the Gungeon, which is a game I've been looking forward to for quite a while, and it is finally almost out. I have access a little bit of an advance of release here, so I can check it out and show it to you lovely people as well. This is a game by uh, Dodge Roll Games and published by Devolver Digital. And uh, let me just read a bit of the description here so you can get an idea of what it's about. It's a bullet hell dungeon crawler following a band of misfits seeking to shoot, loot, dodge, roll, and table flip their way to personal absolution by reaching the legendary Gungeon's ultimate treasure, the gun that can kill the past. Which sounds like a very grandiose goal, but I don't know what exactly that really means because I haven't reached it yet. So to get started here, we have a few characters to choose from. I believe there are more that we can unlock. I'm just going to stick with the Marine for the moment, who seems pretty straightforward. And I'll go through the tutorial as well. You must be a new arrival here to change the past. But now he has no future. And a very Dark Souls-esque uh, chuckle at the end there. So the game this is probably most familiar or most similar to is uh, another favorite game of mine, uh, The Binding of Isaac. But I think you'll, even if you're not familiar with that game, figure out what is going on pretty quickly here as we get started. You do tell us how to survive the Accursed Labyrinth by going through doors. So we can flip tables, which is something that is pretty useful in the game to provide cover. They block bullets for a little while until they break, and we can also kick barrels around which also can be useful. Though I'm not very good at making use of it yet. I have played a bit uh, off camera before recording this. This is the most important lesson. You can dodge roll by pressing left bumper and a direction. You're invulnerable to gunfire during the first half of the dodge roll, but vulnerable again when you hit the ground. We can dodge three bullets and other hazards. It requires precise timing. So we have an opportunity to practice. No, don't explain it again, please. Thank you. So, not too difficult here, but things do get a bit more hectic with a lot more bullets on the screen, as tends to happen quite a lot, as we will find out. So we can also use it to jump over pits and other gaps and obstacles, which is good. Oh, I already passed it. Thank you, though. The dodge roll is the first and best way to avoid dying in a gunfight, sometimes though the number of bullets can be overwhelming. For instance, there is no dodging through that, but there is a way to clear the path. These are called blanks. Using one will delete all enemy projectiles in a room and stop enemies from shooting for a short period. So these are kind of like a panic button or get out of jail free card type thing, which you can use in tricky moments to get a little bit of uh, breathing room and get out of a tough situation, and I will definitely not use them optimally, so prepare yourself for that. But hopefully I'll get better at it. So we have the basics. A gun befitting our stature and experience. The pea shooter, baby's first gun. The one thing I really like about this game is it's commitment to uh, its theme, which is obviously gun-related. All the enemies are bullets, and they shoot bullets at you. They drop currency, which is also bullets. Your hearts, as you can see at the top of the screen, are made of bullets. I guess we're shooting peas, which aren't bullets, but maybe it depends how you look at it. So you can move in any direction, shoot in any direction. Well, that's fairly self-explanatory, I think. I am using an Xbox controller. Let's try pushing this barrel, actually. Well, that worked pretty well. And these guys are shotgun enemies. They are shaped like shotgun shells. You need to know how to use items that don't exist in gun form. So the game has like active items similar to the Binding of Isaac that you can equip and use. So there are passive upgrades as well. We can use the right trigger. I am playing with an Xbox 360 controller, if that's relevant information to you. There are teleporters as well, which we can use when not in combat, which are useful for uh, moving around levels quickly, because otherwise 
it would take quite a while to backtrack and make our way around, as he's explaining. So, uh, this is still part of the, the tutorial, but it's a little bit more of an open area, I think, where we can try to find our way around and, as the man said, hopefully find a better gun before we fight the boss. Some of these do have multiple waves of enemies that spawn after you kill the first ones, so it can be pretty tricky, but no problem so far. Flip over this table. Tables do block your bullets as well as enemy bullets, so there's a downside to blocking off some of the area there. Alright, we've got another blank. But this is a dead end otherwise. I really should have used the teleporter, actually, to avoid some backtracking there. So this is the boss. Let's explore a little more before we go into the boss. There's a gap here, which we'll have to be careful not to fall into. Maybe make use of the dodge roll a bit. And if I could aim a little better, that would help too. It's nice that the uh, money or currency or whatever homes towards you at the end of a room so you don't have to run around collecting it. Use Y to switch guns, as you can see. And we can hold Y to slow time in combat and switch between guns, which also is very useful. So with our AK-47, let's go ahead and find the boss. Let's unnecessarily teleport the rest of the way so that maybe I'll remember to do that in the future. Speak with me when you're ready for your final challenge. I'm ready, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Face him in single combat. He was the boss all along. Okay, I guess we can't shoot him yet. Needless to say, this gun is a lot better than uh, the pea shooter. Okay, that was pretty easy. The great Manuel has been bested. Alright, let's just leave then. Alright, so with that done, we can play a proper run. I guess we could switch characters, but I think I'll just stick with the Marine for the first run through here. We are now ready to enter the Gungeon. That's the name of the game. Alright, so a couple of things that weren't covered in the, the tutorial, maybe the little shield icon beside my health is armor, which basically just acts like extra health that sits on top of your armor. We also have keys and money, which I've mentioned, which are under the two blanks that we have there. There are shops that we can find and buy things in, as you might expect. Keys are used to open things, mostly chests, which often have guns or other items in them. Gotta get out of here. Not a fan of these grenade men. And these weird bird things. I don't really appreciate their bullet patterns either. They're, they can be quite difficult to dodge. So this is the shop. We can buy blanks here. Uh, armor for 25, half heart for 20, we can't afford any of this stuff. Bullet time, which I think is an active item. Or the dueling pistol, which actually I've never had before, so... I'll probably try to buy that if I can. And we have this guy who lives down in this little grate, who we can give guns to in exchange for money if we have any extra guns that we don't want. But we don't yet. Alright single wizard man, not much of a problem, and we found a chest already. But it does not contain a gun. It contains a ruby bracelet. Thrown guns explode. So there is a way to throw guns, but actually I don't know how to do that. Uh, I don't think we can throw our default gun here anyway, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh -oh.
That was a little dangerous, but I guess we're okay. Uh-oh. These knight guys with the big red swords can be kind of tricky. Just dodge for a little bit to get out of his way there. Oh, and we've got more. Oh, we got some extra armor, which is really nice. Um, something I'll just mention in this room as well, there are some other environmental things besides tables and barrels. These chandeliers here that I'm standing right under, you can hit these switches on the walls to drop these on enemies below, and as well as just going up to them and pressing A to interact, you can actually shoot them from a distance as well. So those can be very useful, if you have the presence of mind to use them in the heat of combat, which is not always the case. Good lord. I was not prepared for this room. Okay, so we have these slime enemies as well, which subdivide into smaller slimes, as slimes often do in video games. Alright, we got a key as well. Item drops like that at the end of rooms are actually kind of rare. I think we've been pretty lucky to get two so far in this level. So this is the boss. I think we'll maybe explore the rest of the floor. In fact, there's only one place left that we can go to. And I forget how much the dueling pistol was in the shop, but I think we might have enough to buy it. Maybe have a better chance if we do another room or two here. Okay, that was easy enough, but we do have a little bit more to explore. Oh, good lord. Okay, uh, not sure how you're supposed to dodge that one. I don't think I've ever actually seen that room before. Fortunately, we did pick up an extra armor, so we're just back to where we started in terms of health and armor. Definitely have enough for the dueling pistol now. And we picked up another gun, the Sword Off, which I've actually used before. It's a starting weapon for one of the other characters, and I'm not really a big fan of it. So actually, maybe we'll give this to this dude here. I think press down on the D-pad to drop guns. Get some extra money at 268. So the dueling pistol's 35. We'll buy this. Ricochet. So if I had to guess, I'd say the bullets probably bounce off walls. And we could buy another armor, or we could save our money for the next floor, which I think is what I'm going to do. So, generally the way things go for me here is that I have a pretty easy time through the first floor, and then a much more difficult time on the first floor boss. Especially on this boss. It's not the same boss every time. There's a selection of, I think, three or four different bosses it could be. I assume it's the same for future floors. I've seen those less often. Let's not stand under those. That's probably a bad idea. I actually hit him twice with the healing pistol if we aim it right. However, I think I'm just going to go back to the marine sidearm because... I'm not really a fan of how slow the dueling pistol fires. Try to keep out of his way here. Didn't quite manage to dodge that one. I'll try to remember to use blanks at some point. But usually by the time I realize that I should have used a blank, it's too late really is my own problem. Alright. Uh-oh. That might have been a good place to use a blank, but we got out of it anyway. this time, which I did. Ooh, 
little worried I was going to get caught in the corner there, so I think that was good. They do get replenished every floor, as the tutorial man said. Alright, that went pretty well. Alright, so we get these green things, which are hegemony credits. These are sort of a meta currency that you use to unlock guns that will later appear in the dungeon. The Moon Scraper. Which I think I've actually never had before, so I don't know what this does. I'm going to experimentally fire it a little bit. Wow, okay, I like that. Alright, so we can't pick up that extra heart because we're on full health. Uh, there is a... We go unlock the pea shooter. There is a thing here that we can use the ammo nomicon to look up what the guns are. This powerful laser was designed to carve moon rock at high speed during terraforming projects. And also look up at the other items that we have, like the ruby bracelets. And we also have better reload speeds and weapon accuracy, apparently. The active item we have is the supply drop, which gives us ammo for our current weapon, which definitely is useful sometimes. There's no limit on the amount of guns you can collect and hold, but there is a limit on the amount of ammo that you get, so it's probably better to stick with a few good guns that you like rather than probably carrying around every gun. So it seems like this doesn't do that much damage and is kind of difficult to aim and... While it looks extremely cool, maybe it's not the best. Uh, maybe it's okay, I might be getting the hang of it here. Got out of the room without taking damage, at least. Uh-oh. I didn't realize these would open beneath me. Got out of it okay, though. Alright, kill him before he shoots any more of his bullet shapes. These rifle guys can be kind of a pain. And these ghosts with the Tommy guns are actually one of my least favorite enemies. I find their slightly random shot pattern very difficult to dodge. I can actually shoot this around corners, which is maybe good. Going through ammo pretty quickly here. I might just switch to the sidearm for a while to conserve ammo. We have infinite ammo in the starting gun here, so it's a good one to use if you need to save some resources, especially when fighting easier enemies like that. So you can see on the map the red room blocked off with an X there. This means that we just can't go in from this direction. There'll be another entrance to that somewhere else that we'll have to find. Shouldn't be a problem, depending on what spawns after we kill this guy. And what spawned was some free armor for us, so that's pretty good. Alright, the shop. So I don't really know what this Prime Primer is. It's very expensive and I've never bought it, so I don't think we're going to afford it here either. Bionic Leg. Otherwise, we can buy hearts or keys or blanks. Well, obviously, I have to buy the bionic leg. I have no idea what this is. More machine than man. Let's look up what this does. Oh, movement speed increased. All right, then. Simple enough. All right. This little wizard guy in the middle here. I think they buff other enemies. Kind of like the channeler in Dark Souls. Oh lord, get out of here. So it's probably a good idea to kill those as quickly as possible. It's probably a good idea to kill every enemy as quickly as possible. So we don't have a key to this chest. We found some prisoners in a cell here. So there are various NPC characters that you can find down in the dungeon, and they 
appear in the breach, which is the starting area where you select the characters that can do various things for you. Um, I think those ones up there are the ones that will eventually run the shop where we can spend the hegemon credits to unlock other guns. Well, that was silly damage, but I was... Oh, good lord, that was even worse. I was kind of uh, nervous about the fires and didn't want to move further down. Well, I shouldn't have been caught by that either. Alright, let's not go off the rails here. Let's count down. Alright, we actually got a key, which is really good. We can use that to open this chest back here. Not the cell, though. This requires a special key. Which hopefully we'll also get at some point. What is this? Skull Spitter. Another one I've never had before. I don't know how many guns there are in the game. I think I might have read 200 or so, but uh, don't take my word for that. Even in death, bullets fly. This gun was crafted by Nuigen, the cursed, from the skeleton of a gun dead that had become a spectre. Okay, well, let's try it out. Uh, it shoots skulls, okay. Not sure what I was expecting. Only 150 ammo, so I have to imagine it does quite a lot of damage. Maybe save this for the boss and continue to use the marine sidearm for the moment. The muncher doesn't want that gun. So I think this thing will accept guns that we don't want and give us a different gun. So I'm kind of tempted to give it the dueling pistol and the moon scraper. I think we need to give it two. Let's do this and get a new gun and see what happens. We'll keep the skull spitter. Kind of reluctant to give it the moon scraper because it's so cool, but I can never resist the allure of a mystery gun. It could be anything. It could even be a moon scraper. What it is is a little bomber, so 60 ammo. I imagine this shoots bombs. Let's just try it out, I guess. Alright. This is a room with an altar in it, which I do not understand the significance of. I assume I'll find out at some point. Looks like this is the other. Let's not do that again. Like, this is the only way to go. Oh, I think we have to charge this up and then shoot. Okay, let me switch back to something else here. Oh, they're kind of homing. That's pretty cool. Alright, once I have some room to maneuver, I think we're good here. Oh! That guy teleported right beside me, which I did not appreciate. Some shotgun guys and some gelatinous cubes. The cubes seem pretty scary with the big diagonal or triangular diamond shaped, what am I trying to say here, fans of bullets that they shoot out, but they're actually not that difficult to dodge. They don't have extremely high health, so they're not so bad, but I think none of the individual enemies are really so bad. What really gets you is when there's multiple enemies and you're trying to dodge multiple bullet patterns at the same time. Some kind of bat here, his stuff bounces off the walls, which is always confusing. And smaller bats. Uh -oh. These bats are grenades. Oh, we got another blank as well, which uh, is good. Probably actually use that at some point. Uh oh. I'm gonna use it right there because I don't want to try and dodge all of his bullets while I'm also getting out of the way of this other guy. We need to kill that thing. Okay, there we go. These little bat enemies, I think they just sort of turn into bullets and fire themselves at you. 
so you don't really have to kill them, you can just wait and dodge them. fell down that hole there, that would be bad. Let's dodge through this. Okay, we're not done. He's, ooh, he set me on fire. Uh, roll, roll, roll. Okay. Oh, and I dodged right into that, I think. That was pretty bad. So we've taken a bit of unfortunate damage here. Not doing too badly for health, though. We have no keys. Where are there keys in the shop? Have we found the shop? We have. There is a key in the shop, but it costs 30 and we only have 21, so we won't be buying that. I guess we'll head here. And we found the boss. Okay, so... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to this chest and I'm going to try to shoot it open. You can shoot... You can shoot open the smaller chests. I'm not sure if you can shoot open these big fancy ones, but we'll see. Looks like you can, and you tend to get lesser rewards out of that. But I'm honestly quite happy to just pick up an extra half heart there. Alright, so to reload, let's switch to... The skull spitter, and we'll try to use this against the boss. The ammo conda. All right, so I'm just going to basically unload on him. All right, this seems to be going pretty well. I have made it to the third floor before a couple of times but I don't think I've even seen a boss on the third floor because the floors itself can are pretty difficult, or the rooms are pretty difficult, is what I'm trying to say here while concentrating on dodging, which is why I can't speak very well. All right, they don't really home in. We kind of have to aim. Oh, that was bad. Probably would have got out, of, got out of that safely, but why take the risk? I'll try the uh, little bummer. Oops, didn't you charge it long enough? We are out of blanks now, so. All about dodging from here. This doesn't seem to be doing as much damage as I would have expected. I'll switch back to the skull thing that I forget the name of. Oh no, get out. Please. Oh no, I dodged right into it. And he was almost dead. We were killed by the Amoconda. 112 kills, though, is not too bad, I suppose. And I still consider that a fairly successful run, getting to the second floor boss, which is... I'd say about average for my previous runs. Like I said, I've gotten to the third floor a couple of times, but not a lot. So I think I'm going to leave it here for this video. Uh, if you feel like clicking the like button, I would appreciate it. And if you're interested in entering the Gungeon, I'll put a link in the description below. It's out on the 5th of April. I'll pro have probably a, a couple more videos pre-release, and then afterwards, uh, maybe not every day, but a semi-regular series, probably, depending on how much I'm playing it, which uh, I think is going to be quite a lot, because I'm having a good time with it. Anyway, thanks for watching.